Hello, my name is Mary Ann Houston. I grew up in Somerville in a three-decker home. I'm a lifelong resident of Somerville. I went to UMass Boston for undergrad and later Boston University, where I pursued a master's in sociology. I chose that path so I could serve and help others, and I've put my passion, my education, and the stubborn Somerville determination that I got growing up in this great city to work to do just that. I have an extensive career in healthcare, and I currently serve as the senior director at the Cambridge Health Alliance. My job there is to figure out where the roadblocks to care are and come up with better systems so we can connect patients to the care they need. In short, for my day job, I'm a problem solver. I'm also the Ward 2 Democratic Committee Chair, and for the past 16 years, I've been honored to serve as the Ward 2 Alderman. When I first ran for office in 2001, I was driven by commitment to community and the city I grew up in. I still am in every way. But with years of experience under my belt, I'm also focused on getting things done. In short, for what you would call my round-the-clock job, I'm also a problem solver. I've built my record solving problems to improve our quality of life, protect our neighborhoods, support our residents, ensure our city is well managed, and most of all, to listen to and advocate for you. As a newly elected alderman, one of the first issues I took on was to protect a significant open space. I organized residents to fight City Hall's plans to take most of Lincoln Park to build the Argenziano School. As a new alderman, that was a bold move, but I put my constituents first providing the leadership they sought to ensure that they were heard. And they were. We found a better solution. The school siting was improved so the public open space could be preserved. With a focus on my residents' quality of life, I then moved on to take on other significant challenges and did not back down. I lobbied heavily for the removal of the waste transfer station at Brick Bottom, a blight on our city where trash was hauled and stored daily, not only from Somerville but also from Cambridge. I took on the licenses of various automotive businesses in Ward 2 to make sure they were in compliance and conditioned those licenses to reduce impacts on neighborhoods. Flooding has been a scourge of many parts of Ward 2, as you well know. So I created the Flood Forum Committee of the Board of Aldermen to put this problem front and center for public discussion and insist on a comprehensive plan for addressing the problem, one outcome resulting in the removal of 2,000 tons of sludge from city pipes and a plan to address our ancient infrastructure. It also became clear that our excessive paved services was impacting our flooding problems as well. And so I created and got a pervious surface ordinance passed that requires new driveways to be built with smarter paving materials that allow rainwater to seep through to the groundwater rather than run into our basements. Creation of new and open space has also been a major focus for me. When I took office, Concord Square was a triangle of concrete. Under my leadership, it's now a tiny but important green space. And I didn't stop there. I advocated and fought for new and better open and green spaces in Ward 2, such as Perry Park, Palmarchi Park, Durrell and Allen Street Community Gardens, Quincy Street Park, and even a parklet on Somerville Ave, and the redesign of one of the largest and most significant parks in the city, Lincoln Park. Along with many neighbors and advocates, I led the charge for a well-designed open space with a natural grass athletic field and many other features were the, which were the outcome of true grassroots efforts and a long community process. Where there was an asphalt schoolyard at the Agenziano School, there's now a wonderful pro playground. And soon Lincoln Park will once again be the jewel it was meant to be. When a rodent problem began to plague War II and other parts of the city, I didn't just complain. I took on the problem. I created and shared the rodent task force of the Board of Aldermen. A new trash ordinance was passed as well as a dumpster ordinance. My committee worked with city departments to forge new protocols and educational materials to address this problem and we called in ex experts for the best advice. We now have a comprehensive approach to this problem that has plagued cities for centuries. And while not eradicated, many parts of Ward 2 have seen significant improvements. Beacon Street, a major road rate, was in a state of continual deterioration for over 50 years. From 2001 to 2013, I fought to keep the project on the state's transportation project list, resulting in the current $13 million state-funded mass highway project. It'll include new trees, safe signal crossings, sidewalks, a dedicated bike lane, and street furniture. But there's more to be done. I'm proposing a new set of parking regulations, and we'll fight to have the city adopt those, which will retain parking for Somerville residents and provide parking for businesses on Beacon Street. 
I've also advocated for repurposing existing buildings so we can maintain the character and feel of our neighborhoods. In Ward 2, more than anywhere in the city, you can see how these efforts have resulted in the most concentrated area of maker spaces and new startups and businesses in the city. Businesses such as Greentown Labs, Brooklyn Boulders, Air and Our Brewery. On Somerville Avenue was once the old Mako building is transforming into Greentown Labs. These projects create local businesses, bring local jobs, lift the economy of our city, and they keep our neighborhood feel. Neighborhood, though, most of all, is about our neighbors, which is why I've worked to support all Somerville residents and our amazing diversity, whether it's supporting investment in our schools, so every child from every family has access to education, or pushing for water bill exemptions for our elderly, whether it's voting for larger tax exemptions for all residents, are helping to raise our inclusionary affordable housing requirement to 20% so residents of all means have more opportunities to stay here. I've stood up for our neighbors and I'm more than ready to take a stand in the face of current unprecedented attacks on our immigrant neighbors and community members. I was proud to stand next to the mayor when he reaffirmed Somerville as a sanctuary city. Supporting our neighborhoods also means hearing all sides. When faced with a historically complex situation and coming up with new Union Square zoning, I worked tirelessly with my fellow aldermen to listen to numerous stakeholders and collaboratively solve the many challenges to passing Union Square zoning. While the process wasn't perfect, I'm proud of the outcome, a new smarter zoning ordinance that I believe will allow our city to continue to grow and advance. This includes 20% affordable family housing. 50% which must be built on site, stormwater management requirements, 60% commercial property, height limits, and more as well as those detailed protections for War II residents that I fought. Such protections for a neighborhood such as the Everett Emerson Street area. It also ensures that Union Square will be built sustainably, both in its buildings and parks, but also by leveraging developer payments and new tax revenues for a sorely needed infrastructure. Finally, it puts us on the path to increasing our commercial tax base so we can shift the burden off our residents. As we grow and as, a new challenge, as new challenges present themselves, increased and cut through traffic have caused me to push for the recent change in speed limits for the city and the creation of safety zones, which will further reduce speed limit to 20 miles an hour. In addition, Ward 2 will see its first neighbor ways, which is a unique way to address cut through traffic and speeding traffic. I've worked to support our large goals, but I also don't miss the critical details. Beyond the creation of new affordable housing, to further address the lack of affordable housing and quality housing for families, we have successfully taken the first steps to implement a rental registry to monitor absentee landlords and the maintenance of their properties. This starts with a requirement that contact information be posted in four languages for tenants and for city inspectors. I wanted to ensure that no one in Somerville would be without heat or a safe home because they don't know who to call when there's a problem. I've told you what I've done, now I'll tell you why I'm running for office again. As the Board of Aldermen begin their work on new citywide zoning, I want to make sure our neighborhoods are protected while we find thoughtful ways to promote commercial development, which is badly needed to relieve the burden on our residential taxpayers. For Brick Bottom residents, I want to collaborate with the community of artists and promote their visions for the future, for Boynton Yards, to make sure that we leverage the right amount of commercial development and revamp our tax structure. As our community continues to develop, it's my mission to ensure that we have fire and police services that we need for a growing city. We need to make sure, and I will definitely make sure that Engine 3 and the firehouse and police headquarters that are in Union Square remain in Union Square or around Union Square. This will ensure shorter response times and that we will continue to have the necessary services for our community in the future. We've taken important steps already to increase traffic calming and address cut through traffic, but I'm going to insist that we develop a comprehensive plan for Ward 2. Temporary speed bumps, better signaling, neighbor ways, and other methods are needed, and I will ensure we get the best advice and then fight to be sure we implement it. In an era of new technology, we will be subject to that technology like ways unless we can address it. New traffic patterns are being implemented and proposed by the city based on new technology, but I'll listen to you and make sure that the real life impacts are heard in City Hall. I've already told you what we've done in Union Square, but there's so much more we need to do as our plans turn into new buildings and local businesses. It's important to me that we continue to preserve the heart and soul of our committed community, what makes Somerville, Somerville. 
it's going to be a tough process, but I'm confident by working together, we can build a better Union Square that works for everyone. The Union Square that I remember when I was a little girl growing up here. As of last year, a two-bedroom apartment in Somerville rented on average for $2,300 a month. This number will only continue to increase if left unchecked. I believe in exploring all options to make sure our residents are priced out of their homes. This includes implementing a right of first refusal, requiring any developers that wish to build in our city to include at least 20% of their units be quality affordable housing. Included in that requirement is a tier for middle class families, which I fought for and got as part of the 20% affordable uh, ordinance in the city. And to get to the root of the problem, we must continue to create quality jobs and insist that developers use area standard contractors to ensure fair wages and benefits for workers. Throughout my career, I have always seen it as my job to translate the concerns and challenges of my constituents into sensible, tailored solutions. For too long, we've put off tough decisions with our infrastructure, and because of this, Somerville is going through a period of major change and development. While this change is necessary, transitions can always be rough, and I understand how it can affect each of you in your daily lives and will continue to make sure this change works for you. I have been and will continue to be your voice within City Hall for any issues large or small. And when the noise on your street becomes unbearable, I'll make sure the noise in City Hall becomes unbearable. If you believe in a campaign of progressive leadership and proven results, I ask for your vote this November. Thank you.